Today on the show, we have to discuss Rockstar's newest update to GTA Online, which just went live today and patched several game issues. And we also have some new leaks that detail interesting changes to GTA Online's game world that players will definitely be curious about. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by. We have all the latest GTA Online news and info here today, so let's get started. If you enjoy this video at any point, or if you just find it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it. And if you wanna stay up to date with everything, GTA GTA Online and Rockstar Games content, consider hitting that subscribe button with your bell notifications turned on. Now, before getting into those juicy leaks, let's first start off with the latest background update to GTA Online that released today. This information is coming from Rockstar Games Insider and Enthusiast Tez Fun 2, so shout out and credit to him for sharing this information about the patch to GTA. He says the following. In the background update, Rockstar patched the unlimited sprunk snack bug and glitch, and Rockstar also patched the car to car merge glitch. Now if you're wondering what exactly is meant by Rockstar patching the unlimited sprunk snack glitch, let's just showcase a little gameplay that can hopefully help you understand and give you some perspective why this was such a huge issue and why Rockstar needed to address it as soon as possible. Now, as you can see, while purchasing and being able to use these unlimited sprunks is awesome, clearly this is a glitch that can be exploited in the game, allowing players to essentially have god mode in yet another form in GTA Online. With the exception of orb cannons and other heavy explosive guns from aircraft, there is really no handheld or long arm weapon that would be able to do enough damage to neutralize a player while that targeted player is spamming their controller buttons with their keyboard keys to drink these sprunk sodas over and over again and basically stay at maximum health the entire time. Honestly though, part of me thinks this may not have been the reason that the sprunk soda glitch was patched. I think the issue here is because of the actual Sprunk vs E. Cola community event, where both teams are warring against each other right now to see who can consume and drink the most soda in GTA Online. This would unfairly bring imbalance to the competition, and while one can argue it's not all that serious, it still just wouldn't look good to leave this exploit in the game like this, where one team could essentially purchase and consume unlimited items forever throughout the course of the event and unlock exclusive in-game items by the end, and the other team, E. Cola, couldn't. Sprunk already has a huge advantage by player count and people supporting that team, so adding this on top of it would be extremely overkill. Now, let's talk details on the new changes coming to GTA Online, some of which you guys may find extremely exciting, depending on what Rockstar does and how all this plays out. First, we have more information from TezFun2 on the Diamond Casino and Resort related changes that have to do with the Lucky Wheel. Gaffa, a member on GTA forums, asked the community, any idea what the purpose of the stat is, which tracks how many times the wheel has been spun in a 24 hour period? And further to this, any idea what the, you can only spin the wheel two times in a day, three times in a day, four times in a day text is in relation to? To which Tez responded to him by stating, part of the drip feed. It's linked to a tunable variable that could enable spinning the lucky wheel two or three or four times a day. I can only speculate that it's possibly preserved for GTA+. Now that must be a shock to some of you guys watching. I can only imagine what's gonna happen when the general player base finds out that the lucky wheel spins can be increased for being a GTA Plus member. Plus, the general player base is probably a little bit more casual. What about the hardcore grinders? Some have suggested that it would be okay if Rockstar allowed players to purchase spins in general using their cash, but I think the reasoning behind only allowing GTA Plus members to have this ability is because Rockstar gets your real life currency and cash from you right there and then. Other GTA Online money sitting in your bank account, yes, may have been purchased or most likely you earned it through playing the various jobs and missions in GTA Online. Rockstar is after your money at the end of the day and this is a very cheap and easy tactic to potentially get more paying GTA Plus subscribers added to their ledgers. While this part is only my speculation of course, I can't really see this going any other way, can you? Let me know your thoughts in those comments. If this were the case and Lucky Wheel spins of up to 2, 3, or 4 times a day could be achieved through purchasing a GTA Plus membership and you're not a member currently Currently, would you actually consider buying GTA Plus? Let me know your opinion in the comments below. In other news, there were 
changes to the PC side of GTA Online recently, with some players wondering what was going on, were there any visible changes, what exactly should they know about the latest update to GTA Online on PC, and Tezfun2 responded to Spider Vice with some extra information, and he said, that's just for the pair of white beat off earphones. They've been listed before today's server side update as well, it's just a typo on the side of the website investigating the changes. Today's server side update is simply enabling the played underscore with metric, and I notice it was disabled last Thursday for some reason. And for a refreshment here, metrics are the technical feedback your game always sends to Rockstar. Developers often favor that type of feedback over email feedback or other avenues, because it's pure, raw data telling the developers exactly what they want to know without telling them their life stories. However, in today's case, this update was most likely reserved for anti-cheat purposes. So with that being said, we could have some type of future anti-cheat update coming to GTA Online as well. That's one of the things that I kind of got from this post, and that would be exciting because the cheating problems on GTA are still extreme and obviously that needs to be reined in. Now finally we have our last piece of news for today, also coming from Tez except on Twitter this time, it's in relation to the Oppressor Mark II, I know, everyone's favorite topic. While it did receive various nerfs in the Criminal Enterprises DLC update from July, the nerf that this particular vehicle got was actually a game feature and a game setting that's been in GTA Online since the Doomsday update, but Rockstar just never enabled it on this specific vehicle. And Tez elaborated here. Rockstar nerfed the Oppressor Mark II missile tracking by enabling a set of parameters added since the Doomsday Heist update. A similar option can nerf jet cannons upon enabling too, the Distance Damage Calculator, and he showed Gaffa TV's demonstration surviving a blast which we'll play here on screen. So while the Oppressor Mark II was released with the nightclub update, it did come with an attached game feature and setting that was already there since Doomsday. So literally since the release day of the Oppressor Mark II, it actually could have been nerfed very easily with the flip of a switch by disabling this feature, but Rockstar didn't do anything about it until four years later with the Criminal Enterprises DLC update. That's maddening to know. But what do you think about all this information and news? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. With all that said, I think this is a good place to wrap up and we're going to stop right here. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video today, and if you did, hopefully I earned your like on it. And of course, if you are new to my channel and you want to stay up to date with all the best GTA Online, Red Dead Online, and Rockstar Games content, consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out on a single thing we post here on the channel. We consistently talk about updates, news, information, tips, tricks, and even leaks, and we'll keep you guys updated here on the channel daily, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to follow me over on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube, and all my social media links can be found in the description down below. And you're more than welcome to ask many questions on those platforms. You can follow me at HazardousHDTV, and all of my social media links can be found in the description down below. That being said, thank you all so much for watching, everyone. Hope you all have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys in the next GTA Online video, because we have some more awesome information tomorrow. Adios, amigos.